Okay. So um, as I said, Commissioner Lee uh, should be joining us momentarily. He just had to uh, coordinate something in his office uh, quickly. Um, so uh, if it's okay with the commissioners, I'll just go ahead and get started uh, on the meeting. Um, so this is the the November 6th, uh, 2023 meeting of the Planning Commission's Comprehensive Plan Subcommittee. Um, the intention of this meeting is uh, to get your feedback on the recommendation of steering committee members that will be presented to the full Planning Commission for appointment. Um, the steering committee, as a reminder, is going to provide um, a community of voices um, that will help us be um, uh, thoughtful, comprehensive about our outreach, to make sure we're processing information correctly, that we're getting to a product that is reflective of our community conversations. Um, you'll recall that we uh, conducted an application uh, online. Uh, it was extended uh, gratefully, which um, really resulted in a lot more applicants. We ended up with about 113 applicants, which was a really significant bump from where the initial deadline was. So uh, thanks for the feedback on that. Um, but before we get started into that, um, we do have an opportunity for public comment. Uh, so if anybody is interested in addressing the Planning Commission subcommittee, um, please uh, use the raise hand feature on Zoom, and we'll provide you with a three-minute opportunity to share any thoughts or comments with the Comprehensive Plan subcommittee. We do have some attendees, so I'm just going to give it a minute here if anybody is processing or... Uh, looking for their mouse. Right. Seeing them, uh, let's get to uh, let's get to. Uh, so, um, as a reminder, you are a subcommittee. You don't take any action, but I am um, looking for your feedback to help craft the recommendation that ultimately I'll be presenting to the full planning commission. I really appreciate your thought through this. Um, just some notes to start. Uh, as I said, we have a, we had about 113 applicants. Um, I uh, I want to just uh, acknowledge that as part of the survey information, um, we asked for a lot of demographic data. Um, I committed to applicants that I would not be uh, publicly pushing that demographic data out. Um, I want to be clear, it is public information. If somebody requests it through the Freedom of Information Act, it would be um, accessible. And I've I've delineated that to any applicants, but that's the reason that all of the materials have not been shared in your packet with all that information, um, and thus my note as well. Um, I know that's sort of a challenge for uh, some of the, the people who might be watching this process. Once we get to the Planning Commission, I'm going to be, of course, including the more specific information about those that we are recommending. Um, where it stands now. Uh, as I said, out of 113 applications, um, my recommendation to uh, to the Planning Commission is to appoint 12 steering committee members uh, from this applicant pool. Um, I would uh, recommend that we do additional outreach to identify another two to three steering committee members, um, ideally from wards one and two, and ideally that uh, identify as either Asian American or Hispanic. Uh, those are two, uh, we didn't get any uh, applicants that uh, that self-identified as Asian American. And that's a pretty significant population in our, our community, about, I think, 17%. Um, so I think that would be an important perspective for us to, to find uh, a voice at that table. And then also I would recommend that we appoint two planning commissioners. I think it's really helpful, uh, not unlike Council Member Dish provides some uh, consistency from the planning commission to city council. I think likewise, it would be helpful to have a couple of planning commissioners on the steering committee to help convey the conversation that happens to the full planning commission when those opportunities arrive arise. Um, I've shared with you um, a couple, uh, well, a lot of data, but basically in two formats. I wanted to provide you with the opportunity where you could either approach this however you desire. I tried to anonymize some, uh, one version of that so you could really look at qualifications, background, demographic information. Um, and then I just provided you the full information of all the applicant information that we received. Um, I am recommending a, a series of 12 uh, committees that I've identified, uh, and I can go through those in more detail if you'd like, um, but those 12 would represent um, a, about a third male and uh, two-thirds female uh, steering committee, which relates to about of a city population that's about 50-50. Um, it would represent uh, a, about 33% of the committee. And this is, again, just the 12 spots. I want to be clear, it doesn't include any additional members. 33% uh, of the committee would be Black. 
which correlates to about 7% of the city population. 8% uh, of the committee would be Hispanic, although I think that's really one individual. That's why I identified that as potentially another opportunity for outreach, which the city's population is about 5%. And currently the committee has no Asian American uh, self-identified. And we have, again, 17% of our population uh, uh, reflected that in census data. Uh, nine of the recommended committee members reside in the city. Three do not. Um, this was a big uh, conversation of topic leading up to this, not only people who live here, but what are the workers uh, who work in the city, people who might aspire to live here and find it challenging. Um, those are some of the voices that might be represented there. Um, half of the recommended steering committees do work in the city. Um, and then I, I attempted to provide a pretty wide ranging age representation. Um, so um, I've, provi I've provided this de in detail, <laughs> but uh, these 12 members represent a uh, less uh, uh, undercount zero, in fact, of anybody under 14 years of age. Um, it represents uh, an overcount of those in the 15 to 19 year bra uh, age bracket. It represents an undercount of those in the 20 to 29 year age bracket. Again, this is comparing the committee to population. Uh, an overcount of those in the 30 to 39 year age uh, category. Uh, about an even count for those in the 40 to 49 year category, an undercount in those 50 to 59, an overcount in those 60 to 69, and about an even for those 70 years or older in our community. 5% um, of the population identifies as having a disability, which is about 25% of the committee, um, and four committee members speak a language other than English at home. Uh, the last aspect I did, um, uh, and this is reflected in sort of that outreach uh, prioritization for maybe some additional members from Ward 1 and 2, uh, the, of those 12 members, we have three members each from Wards 3, 4, and 5, one from Ward 1, and no members from Ward 2. Um, and so that's why I think some additional outreach in those geographies would be appropriate. Um, like I said, I've shared that detail. So you as the committee have um, that information of who those 12 candidates are. Um, I guess I, at this point, I can stop and pause and, um, again, don't have a, a particularly structured conversation established for you. Um, my goal to walk away from this is some uh, validation that this seems right, I'd like to present this to the full planning commission, or if you'd like me to do some additional uh, analysis or thoughts about um, modifying this as it goes forward. So, Chair Lee, I'll leave it to you if you want, if you're willing, now that you're back to uh, sort yeah. of structure the conversation, and I'll do anything I can to answer questions. Yeah, no, no, no uh, happy to. Uh, thank you. And I think we can just jump right into discussion at, at this point. Do any of the planning commissioners want to kick us off? Uh, I'll go. <laughs> Sarah, yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry, I'm on my phone. No, it's Thank fine. Um, Brett, thanks for putting all this together, especially the demographics. Um, I'm pretty excited that three people from outside of the city are being recommended. I think I'd be just interested in the future of knowing how they even found out to apply since they don't live here. Um, questions about future outreach toward one and toward two residents. Like how are you, like what's the process for that? Like do they need, are we, would we have them go through like to open up like another application process for that? Um, like how would this, would we still, would, would you proceed with these 12 if we are all in agreement to the full planning commission and then like any additions kind of come later? Like what are you thinking about process for that piece? No, I don't, I don't envision another application process. Um, I, feel, I feel like we did a lot of, I feel like we got a lot of applicants, which suggested that I think our outreach and our communication had some degree of success. Um, probably what I would likely do is start um, some more targeted outreach in those wards. Some of that uh, might be talking to the council representatives in, the, in those wards to identify um, connections or groups that they might help us to satisfy some of those missing um, pieces. Um, I've actually already done that with some other colleagues here at the city to maybe start exploring some names. Um, ideally, I would have some of those, uh, we would have some conversations with some of those individuals maybe over the next week or two, um, answer any questions they have, and then ideally include some of those names by the time this progresses to uh, the full planning commission on the 14th, ideally. I know that's a pretty tight time or time frame, um, but that's ideally how it would work in my in, in my perspective. Again, not a new application round, 
targeted yeah. outreach. Let's find some voices that we think would be really productive, bring some of those perspectives that we don't have in this group. And I would accompany those recommendations when it comes to the full plan. So this is going to be really specific. My neighborhood, so I'm in the King neighborhood. We have a lot of Asian um, people that live in my neighborhood. So like we have a WhatsApp group, so I can send out information to that group. But I just need you to tell me, like, what do I say? Who do they contact? Does it go through me? Like Lynn and Lynn, uh, Council Member Song and Council Member Watson also both live in my neighborhood. So if I put that out, they will see that yeah. too and can help push. I appreciate that. I At this point, I don't know if that's how we approach her. I would make that same connection through our council members. Okay. I wanted to start with sort of this step. And then if you were in agreement that that definitely seems like a gap, I was frankly just going to work my best to answer that question and put together a more full board rather than obviously I don't have those names to you now. So no, I know. But like I if I got you names, <laughs> pick you up on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Um, <clears throat> do we have any other thoughts on this particular process? Just the thing I, I guess I I'd like to say um as part of this, I you know I, I want to be clear. We did have some other applicants from Ward One and Ward Two. It's not like we didn't have any applicants. Um, when I was trying to find a balance of uh, a wide range of perspectives, backgrounds, um, oh, some of the candidates in those areas were very qualified. But frankly, some of those candidates are voices that. Um, I hear from the planning commission hears from the council hears from and so um i i just want to i just want to name that there were definitely some very qualified candidates not to say that nobody applied from those areas but i really feel that i've that this steering committee represents a lot of new voices that i personally haven't had a lot of interaction with which um again when i see a more familiar voice it's not that that's not important I feel like there is access there and we we will still be able to embrace those perspectives as this process moves forward. Um, I was really excited with the volume of new names here that I, I didn't, I don't always hear at our public hearings and I don't always uh, see correspondence from. And so I, I just want to name that. It's not that nobody from Ward 1 or 2 was interested in this. Um, that was a bit of the balance that I was trying to find when I was putting together these recommendations. The Thank you, Brett. Um, hey, just for, for my uh, edification and just as a reset, um, tell me again, just really briefly, the actual, the objective of this particular steering committee so that we, we want to make sure it's balanced, but also it, uh, Interface Studios is going to be doing a lot of outreach to make sure that we're inclusive. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page regarding the objective of the steering committee. I want to be clear, my, the the role of it can't, might evolve over time, but here is how it's structured in our work plan to date. One mm -hmm. is to make sure that we are successful in our outreach. Part of the reason of trying to put together a diverse steering committee is that that's going to give us diverse voices to make sure that we are replicating that when we're soliciting feedback and ideas from our community. And so we want those voices at the table from a wide variety of places and perspectives to say, you know, I... I am connected to this community that I'm not hearing a lot of voices for. And that'll help flag our outreach to make sure that we might have to have a higher level of touch for that. We might have to find the way to connect with that area, that neighborhood, that group um, that we haven't been successful and we might have to cater. So that's one piece of it. The other okay. piece of it is a bit of a technical sounding board. When we are having those conversations with the community about what we're hearing, what are we hearing for priorities? What are we hearing for strategies? It is a voice to make sure that we don't get too caught up in plannerly land and that we're being um, faithful and we're processing and we're prioritizing the things in an accurate way. It gives another set of voices the opportunity other than us just putting that down to paper and sharing it to say, well, that's not, you know, maybe that's not what we were hearing. I was hearing it as this priority. So it pr helps provide that perspective. It also helps eventually is going to help us um, validate how we prioritize things in the comprehensive plan. Once we get that set of ideas and concepts and recommendations to realize where we want to be, how do we prioritize those in a time perspective or a resource allocation perspective? Bringing those voices to the implementation plan of this is going to be helpful. And then finally, the actual product itself. 
is this a product that is accessible? Does it help communicate what we're trying to communicate um, before it gets adopted by you and ultimately the city council? So they have a lot of different roles and touch points throughout that, and that could expand. Um, the other thing I will share is this is not something that we have um, necessarily approached in this application, but we've talked about the next piece of this applicant pool is might be trying to find some of those um, community ambassadors. We're actually going to be hiring some people as part of our community outreach. And so this might also be a great place um, for us to start identifying who some of those connectors would be to actually sort of bring them into a more engaged way to actually help conduct some of that outreach as opposed to just bringing the idea of who we are getting or who we aren't hearing from. Does okay. That help? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's really helpful. So, and I think it's helpful to keep in mind it's going to evolve over time. So, and then also just to make sure that we're setting context, um, right now uh, we've had st we have staff recommendation on the board. And we have some of the data. Um, this is going to uh, planning commission on the seventeenth for uh, or for, for whatever that meeting is. Hold on, what's the day? We keep having them on Wednesdays and stuff. So, a fourteenth, fourteenth. So, um, so, uh, and then it, it, the steering committee uh, formally gets appointed by the planning commission. Is that correct? Planning commission this body will take the action to appoint these okay. people to function in that role, and then we're going to start scheduling the kickoff meeting with X. Okay, got it. Great, perfect. That helps to set good context for me. Um, do we have any other commissioners that want to uh, proffer their thoughts? Donnell. Uh, I just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure I heard what your plan was for the lack of representation for the 17% of the community. So can you just tell me what what you hope to accomplish between now and the 14th on that? Means to add to the steering committee that identify as Asian American, ideally live in Ward 2, Ward 1, um, and at sort of appending the 12 that you're seeing today with those names, and then that'll accompany revised sort of demographic comparisons when it goes to the full planning commission. I'll probably do that by some initial conversations with some of the city council members in that area to help um, help me and help me connect with who those individuals might be. But I will do it in that method rather than another sort of open application. Okay. And from the demographic information you shared, there is a representative from Ward 1, but none from Ward 2, right? Correct. Okay, great. Thanks. Those were my questions. Thanks, Donnell. Uh, Lisa? Maybe I'm just kind of thinking in terms of planning commissioners, who's in what ward? <laughs> Sarah, you sound like you're in two. <laughs> Not to sign anybody up for this. Don't sign but me if, up for this. If that's helpful too, I I don't know in context if that is actually necessary or not but I mean I'm in five I'm overrepresented I would say in a lot of different ways but I I don't know if wards are that primary but it might be helpful context I don't know what ward everyone is in. Crafted uh not me kind of I'm in four, so it uh, looks like there's three people from more than four. Just yeah, we I I think there's four actually, so I think we are mm. quite represented in Ward Four. I think I'm now in Ward Three, but I lived in Ward One longer by a lot, um, and I'd be happy to do it if there's some other long chairs. <laughs> but I don't mind either way. I think yeah, I did want to ask, like, how are we going to do that? Are we going to nominate people? Are um, people that are not on this committee on the table for that? Or is it mostly from this committee? I think members of this committee would be great. Okay. But I honestly structured a process. Like, if we could come out of this with two volunteers, I think that'd be terrific. I'll do whatever, guys. Are these meetings virtual? Um, They'll probably be a combination of virtual and... Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Lisa, I don't know if it's preferred or not preferred that I would be on that committee. So let me know. Preferred by you. <laughs> um, I work like anybody else. Um, I I guess uh, Sadira has expressed a. Um, that's the first voice I said. Like I'm really excited about this. 
Um, Sarah Hammerschmidt is Ward 2, which um, would potentially add some perspective there. Um, there could be more commissioners, but that was, I think, two is a reasonable amount to uh, to translate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to have, because um, I get to speak about this a lot, right? So, yeah, and you at the, you will get to speak at the planning and the council table, which is not something exactly. I, so mm -hmm. maybe it does make sense to keep you off of this a little. I think not preferred, yeah. That, oh, I'm that sorry. Be... It feels like my camera's in HD, which nobody wants to see. So I'm sorry about that. Oh. No, no, it's all good, Brett. Um, for for what it's worth, um, Lisa, there there's also that element of like continuity. But you're also right; you have a lot of touch points on it. So um, I think that that's definitely something to consider. Um, Sadira, do you have something to add? I see a hand there. Apparently, I'm Ward Five now. I'm I got mixed up. So oh. but was Ward One for. Me. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and then Lisa, did you have a comment, Salve? Yeah, I was. Um, are we looking relative to um, race, ethnicity, and age in this next round too? Since there are some kind of disproportional representation. Yeah. I. That was in my. That was. We can. I really think Asian American is a. Asian American War II. That seems to me like the primary missing gap. If we could also identify candidates who meet some of those other uh, sort of underrepresented, I think that's terrific. But I want to be clear, like, this is, as I was going through this initial recommendation, um, you know, we're talking about hum humans and uh, you can't necessarily find the perfect candidate that mm -hmm. going to be, you know, as much as I would like to script this out and say like, well, well this person's going to be a War II um, self-identified as Hispanic and age 20 to 29, um, it just, that's, that's not going to work. And so, yes, but I, I want to be clear. I think my prime primary goal would be self-identified as Asian American and work to, I think those are gaps that we need to address. Okay. No, that's helpful. I mean, and I would say, like, I know we didn't get into like the nuance of age, but that 20 to 40 range, like it's like the ratios are switched. And I don't know if anybody's like on the edge of one side or the other, right? Who's 29 versus 30. There could be people yeah. that those two seem to balance out somewhat too. So I feel more comfortable with those. I think it's just like the 50 to 70. Those ones are a bit skewed differently, but I do appreciate it's also helpful. Good to see the renters versus owners uh, ship um, that we are seeing a good handful of renters um, on this committee as well. Summarize that for you, did I? Yeah. No, but spreadsheets do. Yeah, it's about. Uh, do you have those numbers handy with? Mm, I think it's about 50 50. Yeah, I think that sounds right. I want to say the city is about 60% rental, but um, so. Uh, seven rent. And then there's one live with parents and the remainder own. A little bit higher, probably more consistent with the population. Yeah, that's pretty, that's, that's, I think, great metrics um, in that regard, too. Yeah, thanks for getting such a good group of renters. I think it's uh, rare that we have renters be the dominant voice in these kinds of conversations, even though they are the majority of uh, the folks that uh, reside in the city. So I think that that that's a well done for you and the team on getting a makeup that way. Uh, well done to our community who applied. <laughs> Right. I um I'm I guess I'm hearing that this recommendation seems palatable, resonant with the group. Um so when this goes to the planning commission, like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um uh this will be um include the names of those individuals. I like I said, I hope to identify a few additional ones that won't be through an open application, but probably some more targeted outreach. Um, to identify some people that can help uh, fill some of those gaps. I'm going to put down Commissioners Clark and Hammerschmidt. 
as planning commission representatives to this group. And um, ideally this will uh, be uh, approved or modified and approved at your meeting on the 14th and um, we'll be off to the races. Okay. Um, I think that sounds good. And uh, I, and, and Brett, I think it'll be helpful uh, just introduction at, at the planning commission to say, Hey, we were looking for a diverse technical, you know, expertise, dedication to the city, you know, because as I look at this spreadsheet, kind of one of the things that I, in the back of my head, it's like if we had infinite time. Um, it, I'd love to see a, kind of a quantitative weighting schema of like, okay, how have we looked to um, be progressive in our demographic, you know, prescription? How, um, what does it look like? Yeah, again, from socioeconomic um, strata, how, how have we really capture that? And to basically assign like a like a ratio to make sure that we were, uh, we are actually in fact. Um, because a lot of this has been qualitative so far, right? And we're kind of like matching just as we're seeing, but to take kind of a much more um, rigorous, somewhat just uh, hey, assign a weighted um, a scoring mechanism to ensure that we did, in fact, uh, you know, again, get the most diverse, technically uh, gifted and, uh, and experience, and then that, you know, has a dedication to the city. So I... Um, but to, to run that kind of like, again, creating numerical strings based on these qualitative answers, it might take a little more time than, you know, the, the 14th. But, but I think a lot of that's been kind of embodied in your process. So I, I think that that's helpful to know. And I, I do feel that at least, at least myself, I'm comfortable with the recommendations that you've made. Um, I, I don't let, I'm, and I'm not going to speak for the other uh, commissioners, but um but wanted to say if there is an element of being able to transform this into uh, a weighted schema to say, hey, we've done kind of a best match as far as the, the value sets that we put forth, that would be helpful just to ensure that there was, it's just a gut check against any kind of like unknown biases that we might have during a qualitative, you know, assignment. So not to, you know, bring up more work, but that's just my two cents. I just want to be honest. I don't the no, the notion of me putting together and I, I just want, I yeah. I started from the premise of like I wanted to do something like that and I quickly started mm -hmm. struggling even just identifying what those things are, let alone how they're weighted or how they're prioritized. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of not I don't mean this in a bad way, but there's just quite a bit of subjectivity. Like how I structured that might be quite different from you. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, I think one of the things that just as you're talking about that, you know, like, for example, the ownership and renter is not something that I highlighted in my initial recommendations. I think like telling the story like this, this group actually also has a pretty diverse income um, uh, background. And so I, I think I could do, I'll, I'll aspire to do a little bit more to sort of help answer that question. But you were talking, I don't know if you're talking about as far as candidates or process, but I want to be clear from a technical competency perspective. There's a lot of new names on here that I, I, I you know, it's hard. I want to be clear. I haven't gone through and interviewed 113 candidates, um, but we have a lot of experts on our team, even for people who are bringing a relatively inexperienced perspective to the steering committee. Um, that's kind of the thing that I'm excited about here is that we can help with the technical, we can help post the questions, we can help um, act on the directions we get. Um, the thing I'm excited about, and frankly, a little is unknown, is that by having a lot of new voices, you know, how is the board going to function? And um, we'll find out. So, All but right. but from a technical competency, I want to be clear, I wasn't looking for the the top 12 people who have been through this before. Um, sure. That means mm -hmm. in my perspective, as opposed to some of the other attributes. Gotcha. Yep. And that's what we're relying on interface for, right? <laughs> it's the technical expertise. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, that sounds good to me. Do we have any other thoughts from other commissioners? Commissioner Dish. Thank you. Just a brief uh, reaction in terms of what I saw when I looked through your chosen people was that. I'd be reading along about the people who said that they couldn't afford a house 
in Ann Arbor. And then I would get to their income and they would say 145 to $200,000. And I'd be like, wow, okay. Yeah, this is a really unaffordable place if people who are making that kind of money, which is big money. I mean, I don't know how many of our jobs in this town make give you that much money. So um, I thought that that, that was, it, you, you guys mentioned income diversity. And I thought that that was very, because we did have, there is quite a range, but there is a very common message that comes from almost everybody in there is that Ann Arbor is becoming unaffordable. Um, one thing didn't, I'm not going to say it worried me, but I did note that many people are mentioning how hard it is to buy a house in Ann Arbor. And that is a problem that we can't solve. I don't think there's any policy that we can use to solve that problem. So I, I hope that they won't be too sad when they discover that. <laughs> I mean, short of, you know, having like a mandatory rotation, everybody who has a single family home has to leave it after either X number of years or at age X there, you know, because we don't have more land and how this is going to look is different than what the dream is and the things that the building, the, the expansion of the city in the sixties and seventies made possible. So, you know, I don't know what to do with that. I'm just putting it out there. Um, and I don't think that, I'm not saying that I don't think we should have those folks. I'm just saying that that's going to be a difficult, those are going to be difficult conversations that we're going to have in this process. Lisa. I mean, maybe I'll just clarify and maybe it's a lexicon thing, but uh, condos are homes. So density does create ownership as well, if that's an objective. But um, I guess I was wondering, I don't know if this needs to be a public report, but like you have the population and then it would be nice, like the number of application versus committee to see of the hundred some, what the demographics of people who put in their effort, you know, in interest, because I think that might play through those ratios relative to other engagement events and things to understand what's tweaked and working better and where we still need to continue to work on outreach throughout this process. Yeah, I can do that. Awesome. Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, all right. Uh, Brett, do you think, oh, Sadir? Yeah, I just wanted to, I know um, you mentioned earlier about like some criteria, like what kind of weighting factors. I think that in a you know perfect world, that would also be really helpful. Just looking through the selected list along with the other. Um, and there's just so many um, good different candidates from just a variety of backgrounds. And it would be kind of nice to see a little more into the rationale on, on what went into the selected people um, I just wanted to reiterate that yeah yeah th thank you Sadira and um yeah and I think that may be what the the larger commission has to um ask and Donnell did you have something to add to that I did it's just a couple questions from the data we got Brett in the the spreadsheet i'm counting 13 but you've been referring to 12 am i double counting someone uh, it's 13 on both spreadsheets because that's how i think uh wuhan and i were wrong on ward four i counted four but your summary said three and then i just looked at it again and both spreadsheets have 13 participants. I'm sorry. Yeah, my intention, uh, applicant number 25. I ah, don't. Okay. Okay. Apologies. Okay. Okay. So you're not including applicant 25? 25 was not included in the summary that I provided you. But it, is applicant 25 going to stay on the committee or no? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
All right, any other last thoughts? If not, um, Brett, do you think that you have enough feedback out, oh, Sadir? Yeah. In, in future iterations of like, if we get the list, is it possible to, to like have it blind with names? Uh, I noticed the one with the recommended applicants has the list of names. I just, just a thought if we want to do that or not. Yeah, you should have two versions, one that didn't have names and one that did. So you could approach it how mm -hmm. you decide. Yeah, but once you add names into the mix, doesn't it get a little bit, um, I don't know if there's room there for, I don't know. The, the, um, so dear, uh, the, the spreadsheet, the titled no names compliant submitted applicant data, shouldn't, uh, I don't see names. Yeah, yeah, so there's the other one that has, it's like the recommended versus the all applicants. Yeah. And so it has all the names. I was just wondering if the yeah. selection was going to be blind with names or if we were leaving them on there. So it's like a uh, it will be named. practice to remove names from yeah. application pools. So I so when we were talking about this, um, that's one of the things we talked about. And I think my recollection was that I was going to provide anonymous and then this committee actually asked for all the data so including yes. this and so i did that was my approach to say like how how to give you the ability to sort of approach it however you you were most comfortable with um and again i want to be clear this is the planning commission's decision if these names don't seem rational or whatever that's part of this feedback but i i get what you're saying um and yeah. i want to be honest i did look at names when i was um, looking at it for the reason that I mentioned that um, there are a lot of great candidates here on this list that have a lot of expertise and I they I hear from them a lot mm -hmm. planning commission hears from them a lot the city council hears from them a lot and they will continue to have their voices known I think in a yes. pretty easy way and so I, I just want to be clear that was part of how I looked at it, but wanted to provide to you the ability to approach it either way. Yeah, I get that. I was, for you, it makes sense to be looking at the names. It's just it was something like a broader practice for like DEI. I know in like in hiring practices, and I know it's not exactly the same scenario, but removing the names is a pretty basic thing for once you have a committee looking at it. But that's just my thought. So I'll let it go. I'll let it... We'll get that. Yeah. No, I'm I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't even know there was a tab with all the names. I only saw the two spreadsheets and only looked at the first tab. So you, like, I was like, oh, what's she talked about. It's like, oh, it's right there. <laughs> so I hadn't even looked at it until you just mentioned it on the call. But I, your point is still well taken. Thank you. I'm good. Yeah, Commissioner Lee, I do feel like I have some cool. feedback. So, um, cool. Um, I'm gonna. Um, my what I'm hearing is a little bit more rationale about the group that I'm recommending. Um, I ideally identify some additional names. I've got the two council or the planning commission representatives that will be recommended to the steering committee. And I'm also going to do a comparison, not only of the city's demographic data as a whole and the committee, but also the entirety of the applicant pool. So I'll share both. Uh, so that's how I envision uh, presenting this information to the full planning commission. Okay. That sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you With so much. That, yeah. Thank you, everybody. We'll close this. Have a good one.